Robert Plank Show Episode 206 Overcome Adversity Find Centeredness, Calm, and Focus with Heather Choate. Hey everyone and welcome back to the Robert Plank Show. We talk about making money and building an online business. Our guest today is Heather Choate. Uh, did I say that right by the way, Heather? Yeah, you did. All right, Choate, like perfect. <laughs> All right, cool. So I said her name right and she's the number one best-selling author and her memoir is called Fighting for Our Lives and it's ranked in the top 10 women and Christian memoirs on Amazon. Now, after fighting breast cancer while pregnant, she devoted herself to improving her life by studying what the most successful people do. And she built three successful businesses and earns money from home while being a busy mom. She teaches and coaches others by example. Heather, welcome to the program. Thank you so much, Robert. I appreciate it. Well, I appreciate you. And so can you sort of tell us uh, about about where you're coming from? Because like we, we saw a little bit, or we you know, read or heard a little bit of uh, your, your story and your struggles. So, I mean, what the heck happened? Yeah, yeah, I'd be happy to share. Um, so I have five, well, I had five kids at the time, this term, two years ago, and I was diagnosed with breast cancer while I was pregnant with baby number six. Um, yeah, six kids. I'm kind of addicted to children. So, <laughs> um, yeah, we have a big family, and that came as just a total shock, a total surprise. Had no history of cancer in my family or anything like that. So, being faced with such a major challenge, it really tested us in every way possible. And it was that big wake up call that I think I needed in my life at the time to really analyze what was the biggest priorities. And using that as kind of like a springboard for the rest of my life to take what we learned going through that and then being able to use those principles to help other people and kind of pay it forward. Um, so that's just kind of like my life mission now. So that's it in, in a nutshell, but um, yeah, crazy times, but a lot of really great lessons learned. And, and I can't wait to jump into those lessons. And so like when, when this, uh, so th this news happened and so you were, you were pregnant and you had breast cancer. And so, I mean, like what sort of, um, I mean, I, I don't even know how to ask this, but like what sort of like, what was like the worst case scenario that they laid out for you? Like, I mean, would, did they say that there was a, a high chance that like you would die or that the baby would die or that you would lose the baby? I mean, what sort of like, what did they tell you was might happen? Yeah. So it was a very risky situation. The cancer had spread beyond the tumor site to my lymph nodes. And because I was pregnant, it was feeding the tumor as well. So it was like a hormone sensitive type of cancer. So the hormones that were feeding the baby were also feeding the cancer. And they, I, I was actually told by several doctors that if we did not um, end the baby's life, that I was risking my own life and that the prognosis was not looking good. And there are you know, instances where women try to keep their babies and they don't make it because uh, it's just that risky. So we were definitely in a fight for my life and we decided to keep the baby and find treatment options where we could successfully treat the cancer and keep the baby. And we were able to do that, thankfully, through a lot of blessings and prayers answered that that came to pass. But um, yeah, so we're grateful to be on the other side of it now. Jeez, I mean, s scary stuff. And so you made it to the other side, and then you say that you also uh, built a business. And so, like, I mean, how, I mean, what, what was the timeline sort of looking at? Like, how long did it take you to sort of recover from that and, and get to the business building part? Yeah, that's a good question. Well, I've been an author and um, primarily fiction author up until that point. And so I own my own independent publishing company. So I continued to write the entire time I went through treatment, there were moments when it got so tough that I wasn't able to do much of anything. Um, but I did use writing as like therapy <laughs> and um, was able to share those in my memoir, those journal entries, so that people can follow along like the real timeline of what I was going through and just be really raw and open about it. But um, I continued that and we did treatment for two years and now we just finished treatment this summer. And starting in January is when I put together a, a law of attraction life coaching business online and putting together our first online course right now to share those principles with others, to help them get through whatever hard times they're going through, help them to manifest the life that they want to have, you know, increase their own wealth and abundance and just open up doors, opportunities for people. 
Awesome. And, and so, and there were a few things in there that I found really interesting. I mean, one thing was that you were a, a fiction author up until this point. So it's, it's like, it's not like you, uh, you know, like the, the worst happened and then you said, oh, maybe I should like, you know, change course in my life. You already had things uh, sort of, sort of in place there. And then what was also cool is that you, you, you wrote as this was happening. So it was like, almost like you said, like, like a distraction or therapy or something. And, you know, I found that pretty useful too. Like if I'm, I mean, I can't even imagine what you went through, but like anytime I'm sort of trying to, uh, you know, get the, the panic to go away, or I'm trying to get some perspective, or even just say, okay, well, I need to sort of set these huge problems aside for a while, uh, sort of going back to that, the things that I enjoy, going back to the business sort of, um, sort of helps me as well. And, and so, so the, this right. memoir, I mean, like, what kind of things, what, what kind of things were in it? And like, what sort of big, like, life lessons uh, do you talk about in there? Yeah, so like I said, it's just a, you know, blow by blow kind of play by play of what happened going through kind of the shock of it. Um, and then dealing with a lot of the fear. And I think that that's something that everyone can be to. And you just talked about that. Like we have the worry, the anxiety, that fear and knowing what to do with that. Like how do we move forward through that? Um, and not just let it totally consume us. And so I feel like that was something that I was tested on to the max. <laughs> <laughs> never had so much fear before and learning to get through that and what different techniques and psychological, you know, exercises you can do to bring yourself back to a place of centeredness and calm and focus. And I continue to do that and teach that now for my business. Um, there's always challenges that come up in our lives, the big ones and the small ones. And so it's learning how to manage those events effectively and get control of our own mental faculties, you know, our own emotions so that we can be at peak productivity and build a business that is flourishing and that we can be the strength in that business. You know, the business always needs a strong foundation. And if we don't have a personal strong foundation, then our business will suffer as well. So I think that was a really, really big key for me was overcoming the fear and using that to like harness our emotional abilities to become you know, peak productivity. And, and so along those lines, as far as like, you know, get getting past the fear or using the fear or, or things like that, like, can you give us an example of one of those exercises you mentioned where, uh, you know, you, your book and your memoirs, like has different exercises for getting centered and getting calm and getting focused and all that stuff? Yeah, absolutely. And these are some of the things I have teached and um, refined along the way to get to like a really good solid formula. Uh, the first one was some deep meditation and visualization. And this is like, I call this like laying the foundation, right? At the beginning of our day, we need to really start off strong. And so it's getting your mind to focus on what you want rather than all the things that you don't want. And so it's like guided visualization. For instance, um, I had a surgery that I, I needed to do as a mastectomy, I had a complete left mastectomy and I was 28 weeks pregnant. So it was risky for, for the baby. There was a chance that she might have to be taken early. And um, my support would be gone. I, I didn't have my husband there at my side during that. I know he was close, but he couldn't obviously be in the, you know, the ER, <laughs> uh, the OR, sorry. Um, and so that was just a really, really terrifying thing to think about. And I had a lot of anxiety and fear about that. So I really did a lot of work several weeks prior to that event where I would just go moment by moment anticipating what it would be like to, you know, get in the car that morning. Okay. Now we're driving to the hospital. Okay. Now I'm getting out of the car, you know, just taking it literally like minute by minute and then putting myself into a place of strength and of calm and visualizing myself, like handling that situation the best way possible. And this was a, a new technique for me personally. And when I did that, then when it came to the day of the surgery, I was able to have that calm and that focused centeredness. If I hadn't done that work before, prior to that, then it would have been so much easier to just give in to the emotions and the fear um, rather than taking charge of the moment. So definitely some deep visualization, meditation. And I think that that's important to do with you know any goals that we have going forward is to really focus on what we want and the ideal of what we want it to be. That way we can like train our brains to get us there, you know, otherwise right. our brains just, they just go crazy. They just accept all the input and the information. We live in the distraction age. So it's really hard to stay focused unless you do that training time. 
So that's a really big one. Um, there's a lot of other ones that I think are really important too, but um, yeah, I think that's the biggest one. Okay, that, that's the biggest one. And could you maybe give us like the, the number two one just out of curiosity? Yeah, absolutely. So my other one is, um, I, it's called anchoring. I'm not sure if you've ever heard of that or your listeners, yeah. but yeah. yeah, so it's like taking um, a memory from the past when you felt really, really strong or whatever the emotion is that you feel like you're lacking or you would like to have more of uh, in a certain moment so that like if you needed more confidence going into a meeting or a presentation or talking to investors or whatever, and you want to have that feeling of confidence. So you go back to your memory of a time when you had a lot of confidence and you just really build that emotion up. You see it, you feel it as if you're there. And so um, whatever it is for me, it's like when I used to be on stage singing, I just had a lot of confidence. So I would like put myself back into that state and I'd feel the confidence in my body. And then when you're at like the peak of that, then you just do a small physical movement. And a lot of speakers and authors and successful entrepreneurs do this. So it could be as simple as like, you know, touching your forefinger together or um, making like a circle with your hand or, you know, tapping your leg or just anything. It doesn't really matter. And then when you're at the peak of that state, you just do that physical movement. And the more you repeat that, then it kind of tells your subconscious mind that when you make that physical gesture, something really small, then it pulls you back into that emotional state. So it helps you feel that confidence when you need it most. Awesome. So it's, it's like, it's like, it starts off as one way. It's like you think back to when you're confident and you make that move and then you do it enough and then it becomes two ways. So then you make the move and then you get that confidence back again. Yeah. And it's something that if you haven't tried it, I just really encourage anyone to do it because it might seem a little weird. <laughs> <laughs> um, but if you try it, you'll actually feel the difference. And I just challenge anyone out there like who may think this is a little weird or something, just give it a try and experiment with it. And I think that you'll see that it actually is really powerful. And our, our minds are so powerful. We can make associations like that and they can really help us when we need it the most. And, and I agree completely. And I think that, that anchoring thing, like, I think I did it a long time ago and I did it like a little bit and it's one of those things where like I always forget to do it or like I, I should go back and make it a, a, an everyday habit. And so, I mean, do you, do you have any advice along those lines? Like if someone says, okay, well, this anchoring thing, like either it, it sounds great or I've heard of it or I need to do it, like should someone make sure to do it like first thing when they get up in the morning or once an hour or like what are your, what's your advice for someone who like wants to, to put some of these good habits into their schedule? Yeah, I think it's just whatever really works for you, something that you know you're going to be consistent with. For example, you know, I have a lot of children, and so there's certain times of the day when I know I'm not going to get anything like that done. <laughs> there's no quiet time, right? Um, and so for me, like waking up before they get up is is vital to have quiet, focused time. Um, and then there's other times in the day when I know are going to work for my schedule. So I think it's like finding whatever works for you. You know, maybe noon, like at your lunch break, you just take two minutes to do some visualization or do some anchoring and it doesn't have to take a long time, but it's like consistency is going to build that mental muscle and really, really strengthen it. So find out what like, time that you can commit to it. Putting an alarm on your phone is another really easy way. So it goes off at that time when it's normally a good time for you. And then you're like, okay, yeah, I'm, I need to go do that. And being, you know, accountable, keeping yourself accountable and sticking with it. It's key. Okay. I mean, that, that's cool. And I, I think that, that I'm going to, going to, uh, do what you said as far as like making a timer for noon and doing it uh, during that morning quiet time. And so, uh, and so, am I understanding this right? In that, so you you wrote your memoirs and you have these techniques. And, and is are the both of these things like in the same book? No, no, they're not. The memoir primarily just tells about our story. It's more like journal entries. And then I have um, a Pandasphere project is the name of my online business, and we teach a lot of the principles. We share a lot of meditations and visualizations for free. Um, you can find those like on our Facebook page and stuff. And that's where I go more in depth into those kind of things. Um, I touch on them in the book and I reference them, but I don't really explain all the details on how to do it the right way. Okay. And, and uh, so where, it, where is the, the memoir book and where is the, or is that Facebook page where there's those other techniques at? Yeah. So the memoir is on Amazon. You can just look at fighting for our lives or Heather Choate, my name. Uh, you can also go to heatherchote.com. And on the Facebook page, it's Pandosphere Project. And you can just type that in and we'll pop right up. But yeah, it's 
pretty fun. Cool. I think so. And then just to make sure that everyone uh, has your name spelled correctly, your last name is C-H-O-A-T-E. Is that right? That's right. Yep. Cool. And, and that's just so everyone can uh, – and we'll mention those again at, at the end of the show, but that's just so that everyone can uh, can follow along in the in these last few minutes here. And so uh, so after all – I mean all these, you know, I mean crazy things happened and, and uh, you know, you had like – surgeries and and all these uh you know things that that could have gone wrong and so after you kind of got uh got you know out of the woods here i mean i don't know what what out of the woods was for you right like you, you had the baby you um you had the the mastectomy you you kind of uh got got the cancer in remission i assume and so i mean what what sort of things happened like as you were uh getting back to normal yeah so we went through a lot of challenges um one of them being financially and with our career um, I continued to write and to publish, and I love that. I feel like that's really important. My husband, however, we used to own our own business. It was an auto body shop. And because the treatment got so intense for me, I wasn't even able to take care of the kids. So my husband chose to stay home and take care of me and the kids for you know that time. And in the process, the business suffered. We ended up having to sell it and sell our home. And um, then he went into work as an employee where we had owned our own business for five and a half years. So that was a major transition time. And he went through a lot of uh, feelings of, you know, failure and difficulty there because, you know, he just couldn't handle, there was just too much going on. It was impossible to manage everything, but he still had some guilt about that. So anyone who's ever lost a business, I think can relate to that. Um, So then he went into an employee situation and was really, really dissatisfied there. And um, he did his job well, and it was a good paying job with the opportunity to move up and everything. He wasn't so sure he wanted to go the entrepreneur route again. But I decided that um, we needed to look back into what he really loved, which was flying. He loves flying airplanes. And the reason why I bring this up is because I just read in Forbes um, just, oh, man, just it was earlier this summer. I don't know, remember exactly what month, but that 90, no, sorry, 85% of Americans are dissatisfied with their jobs. And they even use the word that they hate their jobs. And that was shocking to me. And so uh, I just really encouraged my husband and everyone else out there to do what you love um, and really follow like your passion because work, our career takes up so much of our time and so much of our lives. And I've really come to realize the hard way that life is short. We don't know how long we'll be here. And so we really need to do what we love and what's going to fulfill us and give us, you know, the passion and fulfillment in life and, you know, help other people as well with that. And so I think that was a big lesson that we learned. And, um, since that point, we decided to go back to flight school. My husband's now a flight instructor, and he's so much happier. Like, his work really, really fulfills him. And the work that I do, I know it's, like, my life passion, and just, I love it. I, get, I love that I get to do what I love to do every day. So I think that's really, really key. Um, if you're dissatisfied with where you're at, then it might be time to take a look at things and do some, you know, self-assessment, see what you really would love to do, and then move in that direction. So follow your passion and, and, and life is short and, and sort of look at yeah. it. And so, I mean, geez, like all kinds of, you know, ups and downs. And even even after you're past it, then there's other other struggles to deal with. And so, I mean, do you have any advice as far as just like like staying, staying positive or moving forward? I mean, I mean, sort of like what, what have you discovered in all this uh, to to like to not give up, I guess? Absolutely. Yeah, I think it's that you really need to listen to your own voice. And you need to have quiet time. There's so many distractions and just busyness around us all the time that if we don't make quiet time, then we don't get it, right? (laughs) Um, And so just having that quiet time to really check in with yourself and just ask yourself those questions. What do I really want to do? Like, I have this time. I have this gift. But am I really doing what I love? Is my work important to me? Is it helping other people? And if not, then how can I move in a direction that would get me there? Um, I think that that knowing why you're doing what what you're doing and then staying focused on it and not letting the distractions overtake you is really important for a business and for your own personal life as well. And and so some of these these, uh, sort of like inward questions that you're mentioning, I mean, it sounds like there's a lot of, um, 
like a, a lot of a lot of ways for people to maybe ask the wrong questions or not know if they're asking the right questions. And so, I mean, do you have any kind of like sort of resource where someone can like have like a, a list of things to ask themselves or to, to help with the self-assessment or like if someone is just completely lost, confused, doesn't know where they're at, I mean, uh, is there like a good starting point of like what sorts of things they should be either looking into or asking themselves? Yeah, that is a great question. And I can understand that kind of confusion. Sometimes we just get so far into life <laughs> that we feel like it's controlling us rather than we're controlling it. And in that kind of situation, the thing that I would recommend the most would be to get a mentor actually. Um, and, you know, to just start getting into learning mode as well as in like that quiet reflection time. I think that we know the answers to our own questions more than we think we do. Um, we just have to trust ourselves and trust our, our gut, our intuition. Um, but sometimes we need a little bit more help too, to help kind of pull those th things out and get rid of some of that cloud of confusion. And so having a mentor or a coach, someone who's gone through what you have gone through and being able to talk to them and reach out to them is really powerful. I had a couple incredible mentors that supported me in my journey and with my fight to get to where I am now. And I continue to use mentors and uh, coaches because it's just so important to have that resource and that support and that strength. And they'll see things that you don't see um, and they'll help get rid of some of that confusion and that doubt and give you, you know, solutions and tools that you might need. So I really encourage that. And um, that's one of the things I love to do now is to coach people and to work with people one on one like that. Awesome. And so the, this coaching that you mentioned, I mean, is this the the Pandosphere project on Facebook or is, or is this uh, somewhere else? Yeah, yeah, it's Pandosphere project and we have a website. However, Facebook is so incredible. We are able to post our online courses there and do video trainings and everything. So that's kind of our hub right now and that we are able to get more of an outreach on there. We also have a YouTube channel. Um, and we do live master classes every every month and do live Q and A's and stuff, and that's really really fun. It's a great place to network with other people too. So yeah, awesome. So so lots of stuff. And so um, so I'm looking at the the Pandosphere project page on Facebook, and out of all the things that there is, like there's a reduced stress in 12 minutes, there's like videos, there's a one hour session. I mean, out of all the things to do on this Facebook page, what do you want? I mean, what's like the number one thing that that you want everyone coming to this page to do? whatever they're drawn to do. We all, okay. we're all looking for different things. Um, but one of the greatest things that we offer is a free session, a, a one hour free session with a coach. And that's where you can, um, you know, have a sounding board for all of your questions or any issues that you have in your life. And the coach can help you identify where some of your limit, limiting beliefs are, where some of your mental blocks are, and then create a plan on how you can overcome those. So that's the most powerful resource that we have. We have a lot of really great visualization exercises and some meditations that are very powerful and people have had some great results with those. So those are great to check out. But if you really want to get deep and, and make it personal and make a personal shift in your life, then definitely recommend that free session with a coach would be great. Awesome. I mean, not just a free session, but a, a free whole one hour session. I mean, that, that's amazing. And just to make sure that uh, everyone can find that on Facebook, the way to spell that is P-A-N-D-O-S-P-H-E-R-E project, Pandosphere Project. So uh, Pandosphere Project is the place on Facebook, heatherchote.com, and that's C-H-O-A-T-E.com. And then the book was, uh, was Fighting for Our Lives on Amazon. Is there any other place that uh, you want people to check out? That's it. That's me in a nutshell. <laughs> cool. And, and I mean, it sounds like that there there is quite a bit there. I mean, you've gone through a lot, but it, it sounds like from uh, from like the life lessons that you share with us, and it sounds like from uh, your positive outlook, and even from uh, from your husband sort of becoming an employee, and then uh, and then you know going back to entrepreneur mode. I mean, it sounds like you've taken this like all these crazy things that life has has thrown at you, and you've turned it into something good. And I mean, it's I know this is sort of like all the cancer stuff is sort of a a really like sensitive subject and stuff like that but I mean I think that this is a, a really powerful and really uplifting message and I also like that it's not just like uh, like uh, oh well, believe in yourself and, and get through it's like you've actually like shared all these cool tools like the the meditation and the anchoring and the, uh, the these deep questions so I think there's a lot of of really cool stuff here for anyone who has uh, you know 
come across any sort of adversity, which I mean, entrepreneurs, that's all of us, and anyone who, um, who, who like wants to get past whatever, whatever, uh, you know, crappiness life is thrown at them. And so, you know, I really appreciate you. I really appreciate your message and thanks for stopping by the show. Yeah, absolutely, Robert. Thank you. Go right now to robertplank.com slash iTunes to subscribe to the show, listen to other episodes, and rate and review the show. Mm-hmm.